I'm just going to do this video because I've noticed that God has been causing an increase in the growth and sovereign grace teaching concerning being chosen for salvation, being called into God's grace, because grace is not your choice or an opportunity for you to save yourself. Grace is God coming to a hostile sinner that would otherwise not want anything to do with God and God changes the disposition of that person's will and he draws them to himself. He opens their eyes and their ears to spiritual things they otherwise would not hear and see. He brings them to spiritual life so that they believe things they otherwise would not believe. So the grace of God is God coming in and rescuing you from yourself. He's rescuing you from yourself who would otherwise not understand or seek after God as the scripture says. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not even one. There is none who understand, and there is none who seek after God. That in our unrighteous state, there is none who seek after God. There's no virtue in ourself by which we seek after God. So God in his grace seeks after us. Scripture says, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. And the scripture says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I became manifest to those who did not ask for me. So when Jesus became manifest to us, it wasn't because we asked for it. It wasn't a free will decision. And I was found by those who did not seek me. I became manifest to those who did not ask for me. See, we weren't seeking after God. That is the natural disposition of man. There's none righteous, no, not even one. There's none who understand. There's none who seek after God. And so God in his grace seeks after that which is lost and then he manifests himself to a person so they know who he is. And the scripture says nobody knows the father except the son and nobody knows the son except the father and who the son chooses to reveal him. I became manifest to those who did not ask for me. When Jesus revealed himself to us, it wasn't a choice of ourselves. It was a choice of God. And we see this universal claim by God. Nobody knows the father except the son. And nobody knows the Son except the Father. This is speaking about universal inability of people knowing who God is, that nobody knows. And we see that how they do come to know him is because he chooses to reveal himself to the person. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, who the Son chooses to reveal him. I was found by those who did not seek me. I became manifest by those who did not ask for me. And you consider the Apostle Paul who is teaching this doctrine of election that God has chosen people before the foundation of the world. We see that the Apostle Paul was not seeking after the one true God. He wasn't seeking after Christ. He was doing the very opposite. He was in hostile opposition to Christ. He was not seeking after him. He was not asking Christ to manifest himself to him. But Jesus on the road to Damascus reveals himself to Paul and nobody knows the father except the son and nobody knows the son except the father and who the son chooses to reveal him. And this is an act of grace. And this is why Paul said, when God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the Gentiles. So we see that when Paul talks about grace, he says, when God called me by his grace, so when you're called, that's an act of grace. And he says, he revealed his son in me, that God revealed his son in me. And nobody knows the father except the son, and nobody knows the son except the father and who the son chooses to reveal him. So an act of grace in a person's life is when they don't know who Christ is, they're not even seeking after him by a free will choice, and yet God comes and manifests himself to the person. See, he's saying, when God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb, was well pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the Gentiles. This reference to even from my mother's womb, that even before he was born, that there was a calling that would take place on his life. And that's what he means when he says, and when God called me by his grace, even from my mother's womb. Now, us as believers, before we were even born, before we had even been in our mother's womb, there was a calling that would take place in our life that God had decided before the foundation of the world. Now, consider at one point, Jesus is speaking to the Jews, and he says, I came only to the lost sheep of Israel. He was only there in Jerusalem and Israel. He didn't go to the surrounding Gentile nations. And he says, I came only to the lost sheep of Israel. But then he ends up telling those Jews that he's among, he says, 
and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I will bring also, and they will hear my voice, and they will be one fold with one shepherd. So as Jesus is among the lost sheep of Israel, he says that I have other sheep not of this fold, and this is referencing Gentile sheep. And if you're a Gentile believer in Jesus Christ, this is Jesus Christ referencing you. And he says, I have other sheep not of this fold, not of the Jewish Israel fold. Them I must bring also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Now Jesus says, I have other sheep and I must bring them also. Now these are the ones that have been given by the Father. All the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. That Jesus references sheep that have been given to him by the Father. That all the Father gives will come to me, and they're given before they even come to Christ. And Jesus is saying they will all come to him. All the Father gives will come to him. None of them will not come, but all of them will come. Jesus is letting us know there's not a situation where some of them will not come. He's letting us know that all of them that have been given will come. All the Father gives to me will come, a definite statement of absolute certainty. And the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. So throughout the course of human history, people come to Jesus Christ. And why do they come? According to Jesus, because they have been given by the Father, and they will hear his voice. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. To hear Jesus' voice is an acknowledgement that when you heard the teachings of Jesus and the things that he said, that they resonated in your mind and heart as truth. That the words of Jesus and the things that he said became unescapably true to you in your mind and your heart, where you'll notice other people in reality, it doesn't have that effect at all. That it has, in fact, the complete and opposite effect when they hear the things about the scripture, that it's foolishness to those people. That the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and he cannot understand them because they're spiritually discerned. That these things about the Spirit and the Gospel, they're foolishness to the natural man, the man that's not born again of the Spirit. The Gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing, the unregenerate man, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. And the reason why it is the power of God to us is because we are the called, both Jew and Greek, to those who are called, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So we want to keep these verses in mind as we get into the New Testament letters and the teachings about the called, that Jesus says that he has other sheep not of this fold, and they will hear his voice, and they will become one flock and one shepherd. The ones that hear his voice are the ones given to him by the Father, and Jesus said this, in just a few passages down in the same chapter, he says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one will snatch them out of his hand. I and my Father are one. So we can see that the ones that hear his voice are the ones that have been given to him by the Father. My Father who has given them to me, these are the ones that hear his voice. And remember what Jesus said about those that have been given to him by the Father. All the Father gives to me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. That all of the ones that have been given to him by the Father, they will come to him. They come to him because they hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me. So the Father gave these to Christ and all the Father gives will come. Now if you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God, it is because God himself has begat you through the word of truth, made you spiritually alive and born again, and it was a choice of God. That he would call you to himself and bless is the man whom you choose to cause to approach unto you, that he may be satisfied in your court and dwell in your holy temple. So as a son and daughter of God, blessed are you because God chose to cause you to approach unto him. The reason why you have approached unto God is because God chose that to happen. He caused you by his own choice to approach unto him. 
And so we have the pre-incarnate Christ saying, Fear not, I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Keep them not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory, and I have formed him, yet yeah, I have made him. Now remember in the scripture where Paul says, those he predestined he called, those he called he justified, those he justified he glorified. Now where do you suppose that Paul the Apostle got these teachings? He got them by direct revelation of Jesus Christ. He had a vast exceeding revelations directly from Jesus Christ, and he also had the Old Testament to work with here. So we have the pre-incarnate Christ saying, even everyone that is called by my name, this would have to do with all the Father gives to me will come to me. The everyone has to do with the all that have been given to him by the Father. All the Father gives will come to me. They come because they get a personal, individual, effectual calling. Even everyone who is called by my name that I have created for my glory. Those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. So he says, everyone who is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yeah, I have made him, bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. This is talking about the natural disposition of humanity where they are blinded and they are deaf to spiritual things and concerning the gospel, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they cannot see the light of the gospel, which displays the glory of the Christ, who is the image of God. So the scripture is saying there's people that have eyes and they have ears, but they are blind and they are deaf. These have to do with people that cannot hear and see spiritual things. And so we see Jesus say the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others it has not been given. So seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, at least they turn and understand and be forgiven. So when it comes to being saved, turning and understanding and being forgiven, this has to do with an act of God's grace that the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to some, but to others it has not been given. To the ones that have been given, they see, they hear, they understand, they turn, and they're forgiven, which is salvation. Those that have not been given the secrets of the kingdom of God, they do not hear, they do not see, so therefore they do not turn, and they're not forgiven. They aren't given eyes to see and ears to hear, so that they do not understand, and they do not turn, and they are not forgiven. Verse 9 of Isaiah 43, let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is the truth. See, this is God speaking to the called saying, let them hear. God giving a command that they have the ability to hear so that they can say and know that these things are the truth that they may be justified. And how are we justified? By faith. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That we would hear the truth of the gospel, that a person is justified by faith, independent from human performance, that we would have spiritual hearing to hear these things, to know that they are truth, that we would be justified. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is the truth. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I alone am the Savior. So we have the pre-incarnate Christ saying how he's called his sons and his daughters from afar, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. He has given them eyes to see and ears to hear. He has chosen them so that they would know and understand and believe that he is he. So in the ultimate scheme of things, why have we come to know and understand and believe that Jesus is the Christ? It is because of God and his grace. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. That we may know that he is he. Nobody knows the Father except the Son, and nobody knows the Son except the Father, and who the Son chooses to reveal him. 
He has chosen us that we would know him. He's chosen us that we would understand him. He's chosen us that we would believe in him. It has been granted to you on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but to suffer for his sake. So it has been granted to us on the behalf of Christ to believe in him. God granted us faith. By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself, it is a gift of God. So faith isn't something that is self-originating, it is a gift of God. So it is God who grants people belief. He gives people a gift of faith. He chooses people to be rich in faith. Listen, my brothers, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? So I'll stop right here and just say that if anyone tells you that God doesn't choose people and if God did that, he would be arbitrary, I would not listen to those people because they are compromising on the scripture. They're not being honest with the word of God that over and over we see that Jesus say, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit and your fruit should remain. That Jesus said, you did not choose me. And that is what people typically think that they are the ones that chose Christ. But Jesus is saying, you did not choose me, but I chose you. We have the pre-incarnate Christ saying, you are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. So the reason why we have come to know and understand and believe that Jesus is the Christ is not because we have chosen it. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. It's because Jesus is the one that has chosen us that we may know and understand and believe that he is he. If you are of the world, the world would love its own, but because I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Jesus clearly indicates that he has chosen people out of the world, chosen people that they would know and understand and believe that he is he. That they have not chosen him, but he in fact has chosen them. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And this is the doctrine that the apostle Paul taught. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, love to the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, through belief in the truth. To this, he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you received a calling, a call through the gospel. You heard the gospel and you received a spiritual calling. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. The ones given by the Father to the Son, the ones chosen to be saved. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you. Love to the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. That there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit happening on the ones that God has chosen to be saved. A sanctifying work of the Spirit so they believe in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel. Notice this is a calling of God. Those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. This is talking about a spiritual, effectual calling of God himself. That my sheep hear my voice. That I have other sheep, not of this fold. They will hear my voice. They will become one flock with one shepherd. So hopefully... At this point, you can see that there's people that are chosen to be saved, that were given by the Father to the Son. They will get a personal, individual, effectual calling. They will all respond and come to the Son. All the Father gives to me will come to me. The people that were chosen to be saved, there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit being done on them, so they believe in the truth. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, love to the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, through belief in the truth. To this, he called you through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So with that, I'll go to 1 Corinthians, starting chapter 1, starting at verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Remember what Jesus says, I praise you, Father, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to little children. That when it came to things pertaining to the gospel and salvation, Jesus was praising the Father that these things were hidden from the wise and prudent, but revealed to little children. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? 
Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. For it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to bring to salvation those who believe. For Jews seek after a sign, but Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to Jews a stumbling block into Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So we see that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to the called, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. To those who are called, the ones that have been chosen by God, that message has power to it. We see this in the scripture, Paul say, brothers and sisters, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction and the Holy Spirit. So Paul was preaching the gospel and he saw people had a positive response towards it. He'd say, we know that God chose you and this is wise because our gospel came not merely with words. In other words, it wasn't just foolishness to you, but it came with power, deep conviction in the Holy Spirit, that the message came with power. But unto them which are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise, how not many noble, how not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty and the debased and the despised things God has chosen and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So notice verse 26 where it says, that not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. See, to those who are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. If you're not called, Christ is not going to be the power of God and the wisdom of God. God gives his message and his gospel power to the ones he's chosen and to the ones that he has called. We can see in these passages, if you're not called, the gospel will be foolishness unto you. If you are not one of the called, the gospel is going to be foolishness unto you. But if you are one of the called, it is going to have power to you. But unto them that are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Brothers and sisters, we know that God chose you because our gospel came not merely with words, but with power, deep conviction, and the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit was present, causing deep conviction that this message was true and giving it power. It was a sanctifying work of the Spirit that you would believe in the truth on the ones God has chosen. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you. Love to the Lord from the beginning. God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, through belief in the truth. To this, he called you through our gospel. So there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit being done on the ones God has chosen to be saved where he gives the gospel power. But unto them that are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. We see the same reference in Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us whom he called, not only among the Jews, but also among the Gentiles. A personal, individual, effectual calling by God. Remember, not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. So not everybody is called, not everybody is given the power of the gospel through the sanctifying work of the Spirit by which they come to know and understand and believe that Jesus is the Christ. That's why when you do come to understand and know and believe that Jesus is the Christ, it is an act of divine grace upon your life. And God should get the ultimate recognition for why you have come to know and understand and believe that he is he by which you are saved. Because God is the Savior. He saves us in every way by causing us to know and understand and believe that he is he through a personal, individual, effectual calling. See, it's saying, see your calling, brother, and how not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh, have been called. In other words, not everybody has been called by which unto them Christ will be the power of God. If Christ is the power of God unto you, it's because you are the called. And God has chosen that very thing to happen. For you see your calling, brother, not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. The debased, the despised things God has chosen. The things that are not to nullify the things that are that no man may boast before God, but by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus, 
Notice it says, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. And all these prior antecedent reasons is because God has done the choosing. God has done the calling. See, there's nothing about man's choice here. That man has placed themselves into Christ Jesus by their own choice or by their own doing. But in fact, it was God's doing. By his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. That God has had a personal, individual, effectual calling on your life that he chose you personally. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and understand and believe that I am he. Before me there was no God for him, nor shall there be after me, I alone am the Savior. See, if you're a believer, the reason why we are saved is because Jesus chose us that we would know and understand and believe that he is he. Left to ourselves, we would not have known, we would not have understand, we would not have believed. There was a personal, individual, effectual calling where he called us from the ends of the earth to himself. We were given by the Father before the foundation of the world. And as Jesus says, all the Father gives to me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I'll by no wise cast out. So through the course of human history, those that are his, chosen before the foundation of the world, will receive a personal, individual, effectual calling. All because of purposes of grace. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So before the ages began, God had purposes of grace by which he would call both Jew and Greek. But unto them that are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. That by purposes of grace, which God had before the commencement of time, he would call individuals that he chose before the foundation of the world to himself by which he would cause them to know and understand and believe that he is he through the sanctifying work of the Spirit of God where he regenerates and causes people to be spiritually born again and alive to things of the Spirit by which they would have indifference to and their natural fallen state. So Jesus Christ saves us from ourselves when we would otherwise not even want to be saved and we in our fallen disposition would not want anything to do with Christ but because there's a sanctifying work of the Spirit being done on us God is saving us causing us to believe and know and understand that he is he so I'm getting close to going on 30 minutes here brothers and sisters I hope these considerations bless somebody as you consider these things from the Word of God and how God has saved us by a personal, individual, effectual calling, that he has chosen us to be saved before the foundation of the world. It's God saving people that left to themselves wouldn't even want to be saved. Haven't you seen so many people in the world like that, that have no interest, the desire to even be saved or even want to know and believe that Jesus is the Christ? Well, the reason why you're different from them is because God's Spirit is in you, working in you, so that you know and understand and believe that he is he. I was found by those who did not seek after me. I became manifest to those who did not ask for me. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. Peace to you. Take care. And I hope your night or day is going good. God bless. So